Hey, how's it going? My name is Staff Sergeant Butler, uh, one of the members of the RARE program. It's the Rise Above Recruiting Endeavors. And today I have Captain Bomberger, who's going to introduce us to kind of the Aim High app and why it's so important to use it out in the field. Awesome. So I, I appreciate it. Um, Master Sergeant Griffin, uh, Staff Sergeant Butler, thank you so very much for inviting me out here. Um, to share this platform with everyone. I know it's unfortunate that I cannot get to all the semi-annuals and annuals. I will say this up front, if you have any questions whatsoever about the app, if you have any issues with your application, uh, leads, billet codes, events whatsoever, please email me directly. Um, I am the single point of contact right now for the AIM High application. Do not wait, do not sit days to weeks. Um, you don't have to go through your flight chief, through ops or anything like that just reach out to me directly, whether it's on Facebook in the recruiter group or through global. I'm pretty sure you all have my email address at this point or seen some emails from me. So BAM, BAR, if you get that second AR or the first AR, it'll pull myself and my wife's name up. We're the only two band barges in the Air Force. So it's pretty simple. Um, so I'm gonna go through the slides and then I'm gonna give you everything that I have right now on AIM High how it's come to be, how you can use it as a recruiter, how the data flows from AFRIS, where the data flows, the, the hierarchy or not the hierarchy, but the evolution of the application because it has changed faces or created different users and different environments over the years. So let's just, let's just dive into it. Um, so if you've heard of the app as the app where parents follow their kids through basic training, that was essentially what the application was for. And that's still correct and it's still done. That's that's the hook of the app. It has about three to 5,000 family friend members in the app every day. And they're primarily looking at photos of BNT. So I don't wanna call it a pyramid scheme, but the more people you tell about the app, the more people that are in the app, the more likely they wanna you know, learn about the Air Force and come back to you. So that's why it was created. Um, it pulls from all the different sites, so airforce.com, ANG, Air Force Reserve, Space Force. It talks about ROTC, USAFA. Um, just it puts it in an application to compete in today's age with other applications. So if you have a random billboard in the middle of nowhere and it's just the reserves, and someone doesn't know to go look up airforce.com, Space Force, or goang.com, they just don't not know any better. It might pull up. But the objective is to get them in the application, have them flipping around, seeing different things, um, sharing that with their friends and family. Um, throughout some time, the application on took also a lot of the DEP role. So if you're familiar with the DEP app, that is an app that's developed in-house. Um, I oversee that one as well. And so the difference between the DEP app and the AIM High app is the DEP app is a static app that doesn't connect to anything. It is just simply there for information for the applicant. So it can be used um, in Wi-Fi or, or phone, Wi-Fi or no Wi-Fi, no service whatsoever. Um, we pull the majority of our content for DEP management from um, the DEP app. I highly recommend that recruiters tell their members to train and aim high. And I'll tell you why that's important to you a little bit later. If you're very strong with depth management and training of applicants prior to going to BMT, but also to have them pull up the, the depth app because it has a lot more, um, I'd say some newer content, especially around the PT test, especially the updated PT test. Um, when I got here about two years ago, the primary purpose was to make this application work for the recruiters, um, to give them a platform to help them expedite leads into Africa. And when I got here two years ago, that was an incredibly clunky and hard. It, it just wasn't working right. Um, it took eight hours for a lead to get into Africa. And that's because Africa would only make the call to aim high every eight hours. Now we do it every 10 minutes. So at the top of the hour, so at 1400 Central Standard Time, AFRIS called AIM High. Any leads that were there, it pulled it over into AFRIS and placed it in the, um, the recruiter's bucket. The next call will come in five minutes at uh, 10 after the hour, then 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes after the hour. So it's down to 10 minutes. It's definitely more timely. Um, when it comes to getting your leads from the application into Afris into your bucket. Um, the only other system that the application communicates with is a firms. It will send leads to the LRC. We have a feature called refer a friend. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but a recruiter can have the option to create their own QR code um, 
and have their leads diverted to uh, firms if they want to the LRC for vetting or the, the recruiter can have complete control over their destiny, put their QR code out in public and anyone that scans that QR code, the recruiter will get that notification in their phone as well as that lead will go to AFRIS where they can do their own vetting. Um, and so that's kind of the, the hierarchy, or not the hierarchy, but the evolution of the application, how it's evolved. So as of right now, and nothing's really gonna change, um, AIM High is the only approved electronic source of data capturing. So if you have a commercial application on your phone and you're taking this QR code to schools and people are giving you um, their information, regardless of how in depth it is, it could just be name, email address, and phone number. So that is still a compromise um, of data. It's, it's still considered a, a, a spillage. So AFRS doesn't authorize or protect you from using that. So we don't know who the server of that application, who that belongs to. That could be a 16 year old kid in their basement creating their own QR code, which you're using. It could be our adversaries downrange also mining that data that you're using. If that data is compromised and it comes back to you or it's found out that using a commercial QR code that wasn't authorized or approved by AFRS, you're on the hook and you're responsible for yourself. Um, if something ever happened with AIM High, if it was compromised, then that would be on us, um, AFRS, AETC, as we're the uh, information owners of the application. So um, I have some examples. If you look at the one, about the six, six bullet on the left down, there's a ton of different um, QR codes out there that recruiters can use. Just stop using it, download the application because even though you're using that QR code to gather that information, you still have to hand jam all that into Afro. So there's really no point. Um, so use the AIM High app. So find the recruiter. Um, we were talking earlier about the evolution of how it was uh, created. So you tell your applicants about the application. Hey, tell your, your mom, your dad, brothers, sisters, cousins, family, and friends to follow you in the application. They they follow this person through the experience at BMT. They get the weekly photos. They see what's going on. Maybe they decide, hey, I actually want to join the military now. And then they would go to find a recruiter. That was one of the initial features of it. So what I'll tell you about this, and we're going to do some upgrades to this before we leave, that's really going to benefit the recruiter. So right now, this data, as you see, comes from AFRIS. It's just your AFRIS data. It's going to give your name, your rank, um, your landline, your email address and directions to your office. So that is all it presents. If, and it pulls from all three different addresses. I've, I've probably failed to mention that earlier. So what you need to do is go in here, search your zip codes. If you're not showing up in the application, it's because it's not updated in Afris and it needs to be updated in Afris for it to flow over here. This data flows every Monday morning and it's updated along with billet code information. So every Monday we get a flat file, it updates. If a recruiter PCS is in or out, we'll get that information on Monday. If it's not changing, then something's going on. It needs to be changed in AFRIS. Some of the changes that we're gonna make to this feature here soon is you see the ribbons, the, uh, the A, B, and C that have the acronyms for Reg AF Guard and Reserves. We realize that a lot of people don't know what that means. So we're gonna take the acronym and we're gonna put it above the uh, recruiter's name and rank and spell it out. If the recruiter has an AIM High profile, what we're gonna do is replace the ribbon with that recruiter's picture. Whatever picture you put in the profile, and I'll talk about that in the next slide when we talk about how to build out your profile, it'll put your picture there. And then if you also, because you also have a, a AIM High account, you'll have a link. It's the same as your QR code, but it's used for desktop or mobile application when someone's clicking on it. We're gonna put your link under there. So what they can do is go to that link. It'll go to your profile. It'll show who you are, the profile that you built out. And if anyone decides to put in their information and submit that, it'll automatically go to your phone in the app as well as your bucket in AFRIS. So as of right now, when they click on your name, they have the option to email you or call you, but the, the, the phone number is your landline and most recruiters are not gonna be at their desk. The majority of the time so it's it's kind of a missed opportunity so it's another way to try and capture 
and make response from recruiter to applicant more timely. Um, and that's that's some of the, the major features that we're gonna do here. We might upgrade the map feature as well. My predecessor will probably take that on, but before I leave in August, I wanna make sure anyone that has a profile built out in aim high, their picture shows where that ribbon is and their link is list with their, uh, listed under their name as well. So when the applicant hits it, it's it would be no different than someone scanning your QR code essentially. So how to build out your profile. Um, when you request recruiter access, I, you need to use your .mail email address. That's how I can verify that you're in fact a recruiter. If someone did use a, um, so if I did approve someone's recruiter access and they didn't have a .mail email address, it wouldn't make a difference because all the data flows back to Afra. So it's verified in Afra. So it just, it wouldn't go anywhere. Um, they would have a QR code and they would essentially have a profile. They could probably scan the system, but it wouldn't flow to Afris. But when you make out your profile, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to account the uh, circle silhouette at the bottom left of the second picture. It's going to open up that bar on the right. That bar on the right is going to soon be consolidated into your dashboard. So if you're a recruiter and you've seen the new dashboard feature that we have, all that information is eventually going to be consolidated into your dashboard and this will no longer be. But this bar that says profile leads, send leads, is still here. So go into profile. You look at the second picture on the left. You'll make sure your name, your phone number. You can put your cell phone number in here as well. This allows you to have your cell phone. So when someone scans your QR code, that's what shows up for them. Your dot mail email address and your billet code. Your billet code is not your RIT code. It is your um, two digit squadron followed by normally uh, two alpha characters followed by a number. Um, it is the bucket that your billet, that your leads will go to. Fill out your component, um, AF for reg app, ANG for guard, AFR for reserves. Go under that. If you're a Space Force recruiter and for your Space Force, you'll want to select service, SF for Space Force, AF for Air Force, lead type, whatever type of recruiter you are. Hit save, move to my site. The my site bio lets you allows you to put something in there. So when someone scans your QR code and you're not there, it allows you to give an introduction or to explain to them some initial information that you might want them to know without you being present to tell them. Um, scroll up. All the social media links right now are set to headquarters Air Force. Um, so just backspace, copy and paste in yours. So when they scan your profile QR code, they have access to your um, your social media site so they can automatically start following you as well. Education, you can put in, you can manually type all this education in, whether it's uh, personal education or your PME. You can just put the dates, times, what you completed. Um, it just shows up. It's just another list of things to establish rapport and allow them to read about you as a recruiter. Um, it's almost kind of like the same. You're trying to set almost like a LinkedIn, but with your lead capture. After that, once you've saved all this information, I highly recommend, again, save, close out the app, go back into the app, profile, make sure everything's saved. If you want to preview that when you're on the My Site tab, you'll see the picture on the far right. You'll see an eye icon with preview. Select that. That'll show you what they see. It'll turn it into basically your profile and you'll see what the applicant or someone who's scanning your QR code will see. The second icon or in the middle, the share link, that's where you get your link. You can put this link on your Google business page. You can put it in your signature block. Anywhere it's going to be accessed from a desktop, not from a mobile phone. Well, not necessarily a mobile phone, but not from a camera, not the same as a QR code. So you put it in your Google business page and someone's on their laptop in the middle of the night and they're searching for an Air Force recruiter and wherever, you have a Google business page. Normally you have your airforce.com link. They can submit on airforce.com, but as you know, those leads go to the LRC, they're refined. And if you get them, you know, it may not be as timely. However, if you use your link and someone submits their information, you will get an immediate notification in the application. So you will get an immediate notification in the app, yeah. So that is incredibly timely. However, 
it'll still take 10 minutes for that lead to flow. So if somebody submits a lead at 1 a.m., you will get a notification on your phone. You know, someone just submitted a lead, but at 1.10 in the morning, that lead will flow over to AFRA, so it'll be in your bucket waiting on you. One thing I did fail to mention is if you go back to the second picture on the left, the one where you see my name and my email address, when you want to put your photo into the application, you'll see that green FOUO bar across the top. Grab that with your fingers, drag it down, hit edit. That's where you add your profile photo. But that's how you set up your uh, your profile in the app. And then once that is established, it's provided that you have your component labeled right so it knows which address to go to and you have your billet code in there correctly so it knows which bucket to go to, you can start sending leads immediately. And also the next day when we update everything, Afris will start sending your events to your app, which I'll talk about a little bit later. What I recommend is once everyone sets up a profile, go in, do a test lead. I'll show you how we send leads here shortly. Wait a few minutes, make sure that lead flows over into Afra so you see it work in real time. Um, you know, function check your application, and then you're really in business. At that point, everything you use you know, going forward will just flow directly to Afris and save you the time of having to hand jam everything. All right. So um, lead capture, which is probably the, the most important part of the application for when it comes to recruiters. Um, we've gone through multiple phases and iterations of working on lead capture. Understand that, you know, we have to communicate with Afris. We have to prioritize ourselves and their monthly bucket. So they have so many hours of development work and they have priorities as well and aim high has to rack and stack you know against all the other priorities that it has going on in Afris. so excuse me initially when we started all we had was the generic application code so if you look at the picture in the middle um, you'll see the aim high referral application and that's exactly what it is that is the generic application code it was a qr code that gave that image when someone submitted that information, it would go to your bucket. That still works. Um, we're going to eventually just turn that into the profile QR code. We're also looking at doing some other things with maybe QR codes for like squadron levels. Um, we really haven't refined that, but that one's probably not used as much um, because all it does is just presents that. But you get at the same time what you get with that you could use with your profile QR code, which I think is a lot better because again, it establishes who you are to the applicant. It puts a face, a name, a history, a person on that application and makes them feel like, you know, or know who they're going to expect a phone call from versus the name high referral application it is nothing more than that. They have no clue who's going to get that or, you know, who's going to do what with it. But the generic application code was the first one we created. It still works. All it will do is notify you in the phone that you got a, uh, a lead. It'll send that lead to your My Lead. So if you look at the picture on the far left, you'll see Profile, My Lead, Send Leads. Every time someone scans your QR code or you submit a lead using the Send Referral, which I'll talk about here shortly, all your leads go to your My Leads and they also go to your non-contacted bucket in AFRIS. The second one, the second QR code, which is the custom application link, was a step closer to events. It allowed us to name the QR code. So if a recruiter was doing multiple events in a single day or over a weekend, and then they were gonna come back and try and figure out which lead from which event so they can put them in their AFRIS calendar for credit, it allowed us to name that event so the name of the event came through with the name of the lead. Um, so feedback I've gotten some recruiters, they still use this, but they normally just give it to guidance counselors at the school because none of these QR codes have an expiration date. You can't set any of them to expire. Um, so what recruiters do is they'll name the school, Johnson High School is where my daughter goes to school, they'll Reagan High School, the school next to it. They'll create that QR code, they'll take it to the guidance counselor, and from August to May, if someone goes into the guidance counselor's office and wants to you know, apply for the Air Force, the guidance counselor will simply slide that QR code to them. And when it comes into AFRIS, they'll know which school it came from. The fill and submit QR code is a really interesting one because up to this point, all QR codes have been based on 
your component and your individual billet code. The send in referral is slightly different. It is based on component. That's how it knows where to send the lead and it's based on zip code. So it's not based on your billet code unless you select it to be. So we'll look at the picture on the far right, for example, or for a second, send referral. So how this works from a recruiter's perspective only. So if you're a recruiter, you're on the bag, you're in the field, you can use this in airplane mode. So you can go up in a plane, you can turn your phone off, no Wi-Fi, you'll see a bunch of red bars that says network era 404, that's okay. Submit the lead in here. You do wanna assign it to you. So you'll see the second line, there's a, a sign recruit to me, a Y in green as well as no. As a recruiter on the bag, you'll wanna submit that to you. You'll type in all their information. You'll scroll up, what you can't see is under email. There's the option to type in a zip code, which is the second piece, the most important piece of this feature next to component as well as notes. Whatever notes you, you need to put in there to jog your memory on what, how you met this person or, or what you need to help you. Um, hit send. If you're in airplane mode with no Wi-Fi, it's whatever. It'll tell you that it's send. What the application has really done is cache it inside of its system. When you come back to service or, or if you get Wi-Fi, right it will send that message out so when you send a lead or someone scan or when you send a lead using the send referral or you scan the qr code whatever phone number is put in there they get a text you know thank you for your referral someone will contact you soon so once you come back to service it'll send a uh, a text to them and then once the next time afris calls it'll go to the application and pull it that is purely from a recruiter's perspective only. However, this piece can be used by more than recruiters. It can be used by flight chiefs. It can be used by me. It can be used by the tech schoolers um, at the 343rd. It can be used by commanders, chiefs, first sergeants. If they have recruiter access, they can use this. So the way that'll work, and we'll start with the tech schoolers because I know they're listening. The tech school has a program called Seats to Streets. I think it's an amazing program for various reasons, not just because of the aim high. One, it allows them to get out of the classroom and get face to face with people in BMT and Lackland or down at the river walk and try and quickly close. It tries, it helps them build rapport. Um, it also allows them to use the application in real time. So they're using it in tech school before they show up to uh, their duty station. Um, on top of that, any real lead that is captured by a recruiter in tech school is sent to a recruiter wherever it is. So if it's a REGAF recruiter in New York, Alaska, um, California, it doesn't matter. As long as they select the appropriate component and the zip code, it'll match it back to that recruiter that we have in the database and send it into their bucket. So it's also helping there. So when we talked earlier about evolution of the application, remember the recruiter tells their applicants to download the app. Tell your applicant to tell everyone about it. Maybe their brother or sister. They've been following their brother and sister through basic military training. They come down to Lackland. They get caught up in the hype, the airman's run, the coining ceremony, and then they bump into a tech schooler. And the tech schooler's like, oh yeah, I'd love to join the military. I'm ready now. So the recruiter, the tech school recruiter now puts this information into the application and sends it back to a recruiter. And within a couple minutes, you know, actually a couple seconds, that recruiter receives a notification. The tech schooler gets to type in notes. Hey, I'm staff sergeant so-and-so tech school. I ran into this person, said they're interested in join. Boom, there's a lead. And it's another not missed opportunity essentially because no one knows what happens once that person leaves San Antonio, gets back home. Maybe they go talk to a different recruiter, but it allows the recruiter back at their home station who got this lead from a tech schooler the opportunity to reach out and talk to this individual. Hey, I'm staff sergeant or tech sergeant so-and-so. I am your recruiter. When are you coming back? Let's sit down and talk. Um, and that's the same for anyone that uses this. For me, for a first sergeant, a commander that's in the AOR, um, they can use this to send their recruiters leads directly to their buckets. So real quick, we'll run back through all the QR codes because um, this is really important. Your profile QR code 
is listed right here in profile right now. Um, you go to profile, you go to my site, show that QR code. That's the one that has your face and all your information. That's the one you want to put out wherever, wherever you're not going to be. I have some examples of that as well. The generic QR code, which you'll find under send leads in this taskbar on the left, it is no more right now than just a pure application. You can use it if you want. Um, it is completely up to you. The custom application allows you to name it, name the QR code, but it, it, that no, nothing more than that. And the fill and submit allows you to use this application in airplane mode. It allows you to send leads to your bucket as well as people who are not recruiters to send you leads based on component and zip code. We have one more after this. We have the event QR code, but these are the evolution of the QR codes, what they do. All of these up to this point will only send to your bucket and you'll get notified in the phone and you'll get your leads right here or you'll have all that information in my leads on the far left. This QR code, your events QR code is slightly different. Every time that you create an event in your Afris calendar, every morning at 5 a.m., AIM High will send you a, an event-specific QR code. This QR code does everything that the previous QR codes does, but now it will send all those leads directly to your Afris calendar so you get credit. So it just sorts all the leads for you. So if you run three events a day, you get 300 uh, leads, 100 leads per event, all three events will have the appropriate names in your Afris calendar um, based on this QR code. So what I'll tell you about this, if you're not getting this, if you're not getting your upcoming events, you need to see, you need to reach out to me quickly because a lot of times what will happen is a recruiter will leave, a new recruiter will come in, it won't get updated in time at Afris or doesn't get updated and they stop getting their events and the recruiter that left is getting their events and we can take care of that we can do that almost in real time we can verify it and just change over everything and you can start getting your qr codes almost immediately um this doesn't have an expiration date none of the qr codes have an expiration date so if you confuse event qr codes with other events it's going to mess up your your leads in Af in your afris calendar um, other ways you can use this, you can screenshot it and take a picture. So if you're going to a big event where you're going to work a booth and you're going to have multiple people with you, whether that's your Deppers or other recruiters, but it's your event, you can screenshot this QR code, text it to them. They can open it as a picture. They can go work the crowd. Anyone that scans that QR code, regardless of whose phone it's on, you will get the notification in your phone and the leads will also go to your bucket um, and those leads will also get tied to your AFRS calendar event. These come through every day. So the objective is you need to create an event in AFRS the day prior so you can get that, that calendar, that QR event the next day. You cannot create an event in, Af in app and it will not create it. So, you can only create your event in AFRIS and get the QR code in the app, not the other way around. You cannot create an event in AIM High and it will not create an event in AFRIS, if that makes sense. So it has to be done in AFRIS first. And AFRIS will send it to AIM High, use it with AIM High, the leads go back to AFRIS. I think that's it for that one. Pre-screening. So the way pre-screening works, um, there's only so many fields on your application. We did split them, mandatory versus additional. And the reason was the feedback from the field was some people are getting frustrated with all the fields. Um, and then some of the feedback was, we want more fields. Um, we want more data to flow from the app. We want the applicants to write it in and we want that to feed back over into AFRIS. And it made complete sense. Both arguments were valid. So what we did is we created the pre-screening app. Well, first we split them. So the mandatory fields and the additional fields. And then we started creating the pre-screening form. So the way this works, use any QR code that I mentioned before, whether it's your profile, the generic, the custom, the event, any profile whatsoever, or the fill and submit where you manually hand type them in yourself. A lead will go to AFRIS 
and your leads will also show here in your my lead section and again i'll go back to this slide right here if you look at the picture on the far left you go to account the circle silhouette you look to the left profile my leads that is where your leads will show in your application so um, you're an event people are scanning maybe you're talking to someone in real time you want to send them a pre-screen form you think they're going to be a good candidate to go forward with you'll see i have the names redacted this is from my phone but i have names redacted so it'd be a name where the redaction is age if they put in their height and weight in the additional fields it'll come through um, and then you'll see where it says sent to afris uh, pre-screen sent so sent to afris means that lead was sent to afris and then the pre-screen sent as well as completed so you'll go to this page right here. You'll see those three dots on the right. You'll select those three dots. You'll have the option to call, text, view, delete, view lead, send pre-screen, delete lead. Um, you'll select send pre-screen. What will happen is it will send additional fields to the email address that the applicant put on the application. Once you send it, it'll show in the application as pre-screen sent once they open that email open that link complete those additional fields and hit submit all that data will flow back to their applicants profile in afris and it'll show pre-screen completed um in the next couple slides i'm going to show you what it looks like right now it is very minimum i am working with several recruiters in the field um Techstar McCutcheon is one that comes to, uh, to mind he has sent me a ton of information he's been incredibly helpful in this process but we are going to add it so what you see is what you have right now um, please don't panic we're going to add a lot of additional information in but the objective was to just establish the pipeline and make sure it works um, before we spend a whole bunch of time creating something that doesn't work um, also i want you to take special note to this this image right here um, in the upcoming months we're going to do something called suspend and close leads as well as add contacts so the way that'll work i'll talk about add contacts first right now if you wanted to save a contacts information in your phone you have to write it down and then go in and manually update it um, we're going to give you the ability to just access your your phone and then create a contact hit save and it'll go directly into your contacts in your phone the view or the suspend and suspend and close leads will be an extension of afris so you have someone that's coming to your booth, you know they're not qualified from whatever they said, um, or they're too young. And so you'll hit suspend or close. It'll give you options that mirror what um, are said in AFRIS. You can type notes, hit submit, and the objective is it'll move it from your non-contact to your suspend or your close bucket. This is what you have right now. Um, some demographics, family and children, citizenship, you know, have you taken the ASVAB date? Are you prior service? Um, it's very minimum. I, I, I will admit that outright, honestly, um, but it was to establish the pipeline. Like I said, we are working to get a lot of other information in there, whether it's medical, moral, financial. Um, it's, the objective is to get as many questions to the applicant to allow them to fill out to send back to AFRA so you don't have to sit down and hand jam this yourself in a face-to-face. -face. And maybe this will help you sit here and filter through this information and figure out who is the best candidate to move to the top to start working immediately um, based on what they give you and how soon they want to leave. This is just an example. Um, when I send out the slides of a use case, how it works. So earlier I was talking about the link uh, when you go into my site, you have that share link. That link can be used here in your Google business page. This is Sergeant Shouten out of Omaha, Nebraska, or about Bellevue, Nebraska. Um, and so I just captured him. So if someone is searching for an Air Force recruiter wherever, you have two options. You can have the airforce.com site, which is completely fine. Um, those leads are going to get vetted to the LRC. Or if you want um, to put your aim high, link in there you can what will happen is when they click the aim high link they'll get their profile this is what the profile would look like on the the desktop and you see a lot of sergeant shouting's information from what's in his bio to his military experience if you look to the bottom left of the page you'll see those icons that's like his facebook twitter instagram his cell phone his email address and you look to the right the contact form um, 
that's from a, a laptop. So they type in that information, they hit submit, he automatically gets a notification in his phone. Within 10 minutes, Afris will call and bring that lead over to into his bucket. Um, and so that's how that works. This is another example from um, a QR code mobile phone perspective. You create your 8x11, you put up your QR code, your profile QR code, you put whatever you want to advertise to the audience. You put them wherever you want to put it. Someone scans it. They get your profile on a mobile experience. Um, they type in their information. Again, what happens, you get notified immediately in your phone. That information is also in your My Lead, so you can see that if you want to send them a pre-screen or go ahead and start saving their information to contacts. Um, and then, of course, in 10 minutes, it's in AFRIS. This is the weekly engagement report. The objective of the weekly engagement report is to help you monitor who is studying. So the DEP app, you can tell them to study until they're blue in the face. Um, you can have a little bit more say over it with the Aim High app. Every Friday, you will get this if they're in your DEP folder, which I'll talk about next in the Aim High app. So my understanding, most recruiters do not move people into their DEP folder until they clear MEPS, which makes complete sense. Um, so you can say, hey, I want you to open up the app 14 times, take so many quizzes, so many tests, PT tests, et cetera. Um, every Friday you get these report cards. It'll be a list of report cards in an email. And so basically you just get to run through. They're doing what I'm saying. They're doing what I'm saying. They're doing what I'm saying. Not doing what I'm saying. Some of the feedback I've gotten from recruiters, it helps them identify people who are either backing themselves out of the program, who are not so engaged, who might have something going on in their lives and allows them to immediately you know, focus their attention for those few minutes or whatever they need to do with that individual. Say, hey, what's going on? You're not studying this week or this two weeks in a row, you haven't been studying. What's going on? You have you know, second thoughts, something personal going on in your life. So that is the, the purpose of this. This is why you get that weekly engagement report. In order to get the weekly engagement report on a particular person, this is what you need to do. Um, you need to go into your phone. You need to go into connections. You can do that one or two ways. You can go into accounts um, and you'll see connections or you can go into more. The three horizontal lines on the right and you'll see connections. You'll go into connections. You want to establish a connection with them, a parent-child relationship. You're the parent, they're the child. So you look at the picture on the far left. You'll see the person with the plus symbol over their heart under the battery bar. You'll click that. You will get a couple options. Share your QR code, enter a QR code, scan a QR code. It's my recommendation that you just have them enter your QR code. Um, I got some feedback recently that when you try and scan the QR code, it brings it up as a phone number. So they're trying to look into that. What you have them do is open that connections page up and hit enter QR code. And then you tell them what your QR code is or you tell them what your number is, have them enter it and send you a request, approve that request, and then you'll move them or you'll manage that person into what's called the ATP depth folder, which is the picture on the far right. Um, to get your QR code or your QR code with your number, I need to stop saying QR code, to get your number to give them to enter, you'll type your, uh, you'll touch share QR code. So you'll go to the person with the plus symbol over their chest. It'll give you those options. You'll hit share QR code. That'll give you the picture in the middle that I have circled in red. You'll tell them to go to the same spot, except hit enter QR code. You'll tell them to type that number in to send you a request. You'll get a notification in your phone. You'll go in, you'll accept them as a request member and then you'll manage them into your, your depth chat. Once they're in that ATP depth chat, you will start getting uh, the weekly engagement reports. You can be in multiple chats. So I'm in other people's chats. I have people in mine. So from a flight chief's perspective or an office mate's perspective, if you both have two separate uh, groups, you're both working two people, you can be in each other's group. And the purpose of that is if one of you goes on emergency leave, NCOA, um, for whatever reason, you can just be like, hey, I'm out for a week, you know, take care of my people, et cetera, vice versa. And so 
what you see in the picture on the far right is just one ATP DEP. That's key. That's that's my developers. But the way it would look if your last name was Scott, that would be yours. And if you were in mine, it'd be ATP dot slash Bambarger, and it would be under Scott's. And if you were in another person's, like Butler's, for example, you would see a third one and a fourth one. So if you're a flight chief and you want to be in everybody's group chat in case someone leaves, or if you're an office mate and you want to be in multiples in case someone leaves, you can do that. You can be in group, you can have group messages as well, and you can have individual messages. But this is where the messaging feature is, and this is how you establish that weekly engagement report. And that's the benefit of having the different chats functions. So in case someone leaves, you can just quickly take over their people right from your phone without having to write anything down. Also, when you enter a chat, so say a recruiter's had a chat going on for a month, a new office mate shows up, joins that chat group. That recruiter that just joined, as well as anyone else that enters the depth chat, will get to see all the previous messages. So they won't be completely blind to what's been said before them, if that makes sense. Um, so everything is there. So as soon as you add someone to that chat, they're going to see all the previous messages. Uh, just be aware of that. This is all the OTS BMT readiness information. Again, we get most of this, if not all of it, from the DEP app. I highly encourage everyone uh, to have their applicants download that app as well and use that as another reference, uh, another reference or point of study. I only have the original components of the BMT test in here. I just don't have the bandwidth right now um, to have that updated. It's, it, it come down to like updating pre-screening or updating and adding components of the PT test. And I pick pre-screening all day long. Also, BMT has told me that for the time being, they're sticking to the old method, um, which is more organized than having people wanting to do different pieces of each PT test. This is what the PT test would look like or the IFT, the initial fitness test. So if anybody is interested in special warfare, they can go to the physical health and wellness, which is the picture on the far left. You actually go to more awaiting training, physical health and wellness. And then under training, you see initial fitness test. That would be the special warfare test. They watch that video, the picture in the middle. Then they go into the application. Uh, the two pictures on the right, you'll see the first one or the one from the second from the right. They pick their career path, whether it's enlisted or officer, they pick their career field, whether it's Crow or PJ, Stowe or CTT, et cetera. And then it'll automatically break out the order of events for that particular PT test. You hit the start timer, you have your minimums and your maximums, um, maximum times, minimum reps. You type all that information in there, it'll calculate it out, red for fail, uh, green for pass, and then it'll also store that information. So if you look at the picture on the far right, and this is the same for the PT test as well. So if you have someone who's failing the PT test and you want them actively taking a PT test every day or once a week, and it'll show in the weekly engagement report, um, you look at the picture on the far right, you'll see a clock. Um, looks like it's at four or five o'clock right under the battery bar. Select that image right there. Now go all the way back across the screen and look at the picture second from the left, where you see April 29th, 26th, 21st, January 26th, fail, pass, pass, pass. When you select that clock in the top right, it'll give you the history of tests, whether it's a special warfare IFT or if it's a standard PT test. Um, we're almost done. I'm going to burn through here real quick and open it up for questions. Upcoming features. So right now, since Space Force has pulled all their content to Space Force, um, we're limited on what we show. So we're trying to update our database and our CMS system so we can, we can start pulling Space Force content onto the phone. Um, I talked about the profile pic and the AM High link in the Find the Recruiter. Auto save the contacts. Um, I'm going to skip targeting zone canvas and heat map for a second because I haven't talked about that. I talked about updating the pre-screen form and the auto closeout suspend. These are just tentative dates. Um, it really comes down to how complicated the requirement is. Some of them get moved up, some of them get moved out. I'm particularly interested in these. 
um, because I'm trying to get this complete before I leave in August. Uh, the targeting zone canvas and heat map is a pretty unique feature, it's something that we don't have. So right now, when you go to the home page and you go to events, you see all the events that we pull from TFMT. And those events are for the public audience to see where events or national events are being hosted so they can go and participate. Your events are different. Your events come from your AFRIS QR calendar or your, your AFRIS calendar and create event QR code. This heat map will show you where your leads are coming from. And actually, it's a couple of things. The first piece is when someone submits a lead, it will it will geo time or geo stamp the lat long location and it'll show a heat map. The more leads come from that specific area, um, excuse me, the more leads come from that specific area, the heat, uh, the darker that the map will get. It will also allow you to geotag materials that you put out. For example, I want to go put out cards and pamphlets at these locations. I'm just, you know, I'm going to speak from the recruiter's perspective. And you start putting them out. But unless you're keeping track of where you're putting them out and when you're putting them out and the quantity of you're putting them out, you're pseudo guessing. So what happens is it'll allow you to go to Planet Fitness or whatever and drop down so much material. Um, step back with your phone take a picture snap it geotag and show it on a map the date that you drop that material then you can write in the quantities 30 cards 20 pamphlets you know my qr code and save it and then now you have a history and it'll show you on a map so depending on how big your aor is it'll show you all the locations if you're a flight chief it'll show you if two people are too close together they're too far apart if there's a middle area that's going unchecked and allow the recruiter to, or the flight chief to look on a map and say hey go to this location and drop off some material time stamp it so we can see it and so it allows more organization of that that particular feature so that's and that that is a pretty big lift i'm not going to lie so um but we're, we're already in the process of trying to develop it and getting it queued up. So there's a lot of internal pieces that are going on, but that is specifically to the application. None of that data right now is going to flow over to AFRIS. Um, so it's just all being developed internally. Um, I talked about, I talked about everything else. This is just some stats. So if you look at the picture on the far, far left, I got here in August of 21. Um, Fiscal year 19, there were 23 leads. Fiscal year 20, 95 leads. And then you can just see in fiscal year 20, and these are recruited generated leads. Um, and so, so far for this fiscal year, halfway through, we're like seven, 17,900. So it just breaks out by the components and just kind of gives a bar graph um, just to the usage, right? So, you know, you can see where in the, the initial years, it just wasn't being used. And that, that's, that set up, that was for a purpose. And now here it's, it's, it is really being used a lot. So I tried to burn through that as quickly as possible. Sergeant Butler, I'm really glad you recorded it. So in case I was talking too fast for somebody, if they need to go back and look, uh, you got 13 minutes. Any, any solid questions you want to ask me? Uh, first, I just wanted to thank you for your time as well. Um, and then kind of wanted to go over some of the slides with you while we ask the questions. I have some things noted um, while we went through it. So let's see the, we go to the second slide, if you don't mind, please. And then um, let's see. This one. Is there? So also just be advised that we do have some notes saying that the 3P0X1 was not in the military service. And I follow up with that and it's not there. Do you have all this written down? Will you send me that email, follow up email? Yes, okay. we'll, we'll do. Uh, but Damn, I'm a see. prior cop too, that's, a, that's disappointing. <laughs> all right, one of the questions we also had, or actually some feedback I wanted to provide was, uh, just pretty much the aim high app has changed. I've been doing this for over three years now and the aim high app can really only be as good as the feedback we provide it. Um, I know I've seen some updates that we request out in the field and it does take some time, but at the end of the day, just like this group that we're making, uh, this group isn't really for now, it's for tomorrow. So 
everything that you have, just keep on collecting data, keep on collecting feedback and present it. Uh, so that way somebody else can, can benefit from it. On, a, on another piece about that, I'll say this, there's, a, there's an option to send feedback in the app in the settings. If you go in there and put feedback, um, this is recruiter so-and-so and this doesn't, it will go automatically to my developers. It'll skip me. They'll bring it to my attention, but they'll record all that. And sometimes it's really quick for them to fix things depending on how small, like like there's there has to be a code or there has to be something about the 3P uh, OX1. So just that with AC, you can send it directly to me. I have no problem with that, but I would recommend you do it in the application so they have everything. Yep. And I see someone's got a hand. Wait, go ahead. Okay. Oh, that's the general problem. Hey, sir. Uh, I just want to say thanks for coming on again. This is some really good information. Uh, like Sergeant Butler, I think him and I really dove deep into the Aim High app when, uh, whenever a lot of these updates came out. And I used it religiously at events. Like I have uh, big 16 by 20 cards uh, with my personal information on it. Um, and I hang these flyers out everywhere I go. And I've seen a big uptick in uh, just lead generation off that app. So I think the stuff you guys are doing is, is really benefiting us here on the bag. So just want to say thanks again. Thank you. And then also, I think the QR code is um, probably the most underrated thing that you were addressing. Uh, when it comes to zone canvassing, um, you know, putting those QR codes everywhere is going to allow you to see where your hotspots are. Um, and then all, as well as the schools, make sure that every single school has your uh, your, your mic is, uh, is blowing to it. Right, sorry about that. <laughs> all right, perfect. All right. So it's going to figure out where your hotspot zones are. Uh, so that way, you know, you can spend more time in those areas. Uh, there's just trying to get as many people as you can in that area before it drives up pretty much uh, and seeing where you need to be at. Those are very key things. Um, and let's see. So something else that I do for this is the Google, uh, the QR codes can also be used at your office. I would highly suggest putting them on your door and in front of your offices as well as changing your office hours to 24 seven and forwarding your phones, uh, your office phones to uh, one of the recruiters in there. Now, whether that's you taking turns on who gets it uh, is all about how your office partners can communicate. Obviously you get with your flight chief to figure out more information on that part. Uh, but when it comes to the AIM High app, finding your zip code, we do everything off of zip code. So I'm actually out of a hub with four recruiters and there's never, there's no issues. You know, whenever something comes through, we figure out what zip code they're out of, and boom, that's their lead. So let's see. Do you have anything else to tag along with that part? I'm trying to organize one more question, I see. Why are you uh, looking at that real quick? The, the Guardians piece? So I get that information from the Space Force. Any information is... Uh, if someone has updated information on, on Space Force, send it to me over. Yes, sir. I was able to collect the, a POC for that, and I will send you that person as well. Hey, Cap, I got a question. This is Sergeant McCutcheon. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Hey, um, yeah. So when I get on my screen there, it tells me I got one EAD less than two weeks, but I can't click on it. I don't know what. I now addressed it with you already. Is there, is there a, uh, a future fix for that to come up so where I click on it, I know who the EAD is, you know, the dates, we can get all that, uh, you know. And all. Now, th there, there is um, there is a future update. This entire sprint right now is developed, uh, is dedicated to updating the CMS and the database so we can pull in Space Force content because it's such a high priority because we're not getting into the application. It says high, high visibility. So for the next last week and this week there's absolutely no development to anything else um, i'm going to try and fix that at least so it shows the objective is to show you who is ead and so as a reminder like hey this person's leaving you know maybe check out their stuff but you're, you're not wrong but there is a fix coming um Sergeant guzman about the lot of qr codes you're not wrong either we're trying to do some tlc to the application to reorganize it um to get a lot of that stuff on the dashboard 
so it's not so um, all over the place. All right, Sean Butler, I'm just gonna keep reading while you're talking. Perfect. Um, there was actually one more thing I wanted to add in. Uh, when we went over the pre screen, uh, this pre screen slide, uh, let's see. Um, I was wondering if there can be preferences to that. So I remember you were talking about people were saying that there was not enough information, and then you were saying that there's too much information on there. So maybe allowing there to be preferences tabs on there. So whenever you're trying to click on what to add in there, your three dots and be like add or remove or add or hide. That's pretty good feedback, and I, I understand the purpose. Um, way we'd have to initially roll it out because that's so we'd have to collect all the information from a development standpoint in order to filter out information so we have to put in all the information and then the feedback could be can you make this filterable so i can select what i want them to fill out versus what i don't um i actually haven't heard that um that i don't maybe i maybe i have maybe i haven't um i would send that as send that part of your your stuff to me over um, Kachin, what is the GMB? How do I add my GMB address to Aim High? The Google my Google my business. Like when you go under the Aim High, um, when you go to edit and go to like my site, scroll all the way, scroll all the way down. And it says Google Business Profile. How do I mm -hmm. find that so that way when they click on it, it brings up my Google Business page? Um. I don't know how to figure that out. So that was I don't know. I'm, not, I'm going to have to uh, message him individually about. So for at least for our side, we had our PA guy make our Google business, and then we had to give him the the pin for it, and then we we're able to have access to it. So I believe he might not have access to his Google business page, which is going to be with his well, squadron. I do. I mean, I do. I'm a manager on my Google business page, so I do have access. I can, you know, add things, respond to people, do all that stuff. I just don't know where you find the HTTP address to put in there. Okay, that's what you're saying. I didn't know if anybody else has been able to figure that out. Um, I will look into that and give you some more information on that. But... I appreciate it. Uh, and I appreciate what everything you guys have done on this app. I mean, I use this religiously also at uh, all my events. Um, I've been even using it just uh, with, uh, you know, meeting people out there in the streets and getting pre-screened just so I can, by the time I get back to the office, I already have all their information and I'm ready to rock. So I do appreciate your guys' efforts on this. So from the schoolhouse, the last question about the, the stuff from BMT, Air Force, Space Force and MEPS. We can add that. That'd be super easy. It's just, we just need the information. Um, and that stuff is really easy to update because it's normally just, just copy and paste, put in a database and it just shows and it's only as good as it is accurate. So if anything changes, it would need to be brought to our attention normally in the feedback and sent to me or my predecessor over. All right, Tom Butler, anything else? Uh, I believe that was it. Thank you again for your time. Uh, we are going to still keep going um, to talk about how this is being used in the field and how uh, our rare team uses it as well. So if you want stick to uh, stick around for about 10, 15 minutes. Um, but for you, Captain Bomberger, I do appreciate your time. And I know you said you had to leave around you know, right now as well. Yeah. <laughs> so um thank you again let's try and do this again one at least one more time before i leave in august maybe once in july if you know if we start getting some of this stuff content pushed up so you get a better understanding of when it's coming out but at least before i leave i leave august i, I wills up august 21st so let's do the first week of august um if you have any problems whatsoever please reach out to me directly Email, I'm your point of contact. If you have some recommendations for the application, you can send them in feedback in the application. And every morning, my developers will they update me on the most like, hey, and just say you're a recruiter. Say, hey, this is a recruiter from the field. So they know and it's not a parent, you know, or an applicant. And they will always prioritize the recruiters 
um, ahead and they'll say, hey, this is what the recruiter said. And if you type in your name, you should you should also put in your name. So I have the opportunity to reach out to you in case I need to ask you feedback. Um, I guess it might just be simpler to email me in that sense. Yeah, if you got direct uh, feedback on the app, just email me directly. So I don't have to go hunt you down. Um, take care. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Exactly. All right. Let's see. So turn it Romo, do you have um while we're while we're doing this, I'm just gonna talk for a little bit longer while you collect some information um on how you use your Google or how you use your aim high. Uh, I know for me, um something that I started doing was inviting a lot of people to my aim high messaging boards because you can add or remove them at any time. So it's a really good uh, kind of like a strategy to show that people aren't alone, especially when they come into your into your office, it feels like it's a one-on-one. -on -one. So just add them into that group chat. Let them talk to other people who are already depth in as well. Uh, our depths are moving really fast right now. I believe my average depth is around, it feels like three weeks. So I want them to be more involved in the beginning of the process. Like make them involved, get out there, you know, get out in the community, especially with Genesis out there. Um, it's a lot of stress that's being put on the applicant as well when they're over here collecting all their medical records. Make them feel like they're not alone. Help them out. Yeah, so I, I do something similar too. So like like you said, I think our processing timeline with Genesis is actually longer than our depth timeline once they're in before they ship out. So I actually create two chats within my AIM High app. One is for strictly for individuals that are depth in that I'm putting actual depth information out there. And the other one is for active PIRs. And that's how I keep engaged with like multiple PIRs at one time uh, because it is harder for us now to um, maintain that line of communication through the medical process. So in there, I like to go in there and have them take tests or, you know, put some different information in there and get some feedback back and forth. So that's definitely one thing um, that I've been doing that's, that's been really helpful. Kind of, like you said, keeping that engagement piece going. Is there, and then that's, that's huge. Like we were just saying, um, that, that window is not changing, it just got adjusted. Um, and we want them to be a part of it, especially when it comes to perpetuation and getting them out there. And let's see, not sure Griffin, did you have anything? I'll let you collect your thoughts really quick while, while we're doing this. I have uh, a little bit of some background on everything. Uh, like I said, we've been taking notes on everything and we will be making videos uh, to just kind of break down each section of this as well as guys on how you can use it out in the field. So if you have any ideas, any suggestions, any video things you wanna see out there, let us know and uh, we will make a video for it so that way you can break down the processes and the steps as well. Yeah, so I don't use it so much for the chats. I use it just for the uh, memory work. That way they're prepared for BMT. So <clears throat> like the Airman's Creed, the Air Force song, all of the ranks, reporting statements, that's basically what I use it for. Um, not so much the chat, because I, I make a chat in my phone that I have everybody into. So that's what I use that for. Perfect. All right. And we don't have any more questions. So I'll, 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 I'll add one more thing uh, real quick, Sergeant Butler, if you don't mind. Um, any recruiters that are not utilizing that QR code to post in businesses when you're zone canvassing, I mean, it's really simple. Like I did mine just through Canva and just copy that. QR code and made a quick poster out of it, but you get so much engagement off of that because today it, individuals like so much more just to be able to scan something and uh, and just send it out. So you, I just encourage everybody to utilize that QR code and put it out into your zone uh, because it makes everything so much easier for you and the applicant. All right. And like I said, um, so the rare team is, again, rise above recruiting endeavors. We plan to be here. The whole team here is going to be here for the next four plus years. We are looking for two more editors. So that way we can get out more content. We have a whole bunch of uh, content already wrapped up. We just need to get it chopped up and, and provided to you all. So if that's something that you would be interested in or know somebody who would be interested in it, let us know. So that way we can get some information out there to uh, more people out in the field. The vision of Rare is to pretty much bring the recruiting world to life. 
when it comes to like SOPG updates, when it comes to uh, you know, AFRIS updates, we want to be able to be there for the people who are providing those updates with a one-on-one, -on -one, get, get a little bit more familiar with it. That way it doesn't seem like it's just robotic. So yeah, if anybody wants to see different content or anything like that, you know, just reach out to one of the board members and we'll, we'll email you or we'll post it on, on Facebook or whatever you guys need. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely share the content because this is what this group's all about is sharing ideas to kind of help everybody. So uh, Sergeant Hopkins, I'll definitely email you uh, the poster that I have. Yep. So some of the recruiters corner is the group that Master and Griffin made. He organizes that. Um, if there's ever a time that you want to invite to that group, we're also on recruiter to recruiter Facebook. Post on there. We'll get you into that, um, that team's group. So uh, let's, let me see. Did you have anything else, Master Sergeant Griffin, to wrap up with this? No, I think you covered it all. <clears throat> Definitely covered it all. So I think we got all of those questions. I think you copied them down. I copied them down. Um, then we'll push those out to the uh, recruiters corner group, and that way we're not emailing them out to everybody. That way we can just put post them on there for all the questions and send them out to everybody that asked them. So I think that's it. All right, perfect. And like I said, uh, we got some videos coming up for you all. So we're gonna try and do videos um, every other Friday. So we should be able to get two videos of what how we apply stuff out in the field to you all every other Friday. And then we're going to do the Zoom call. Some of these Zoom calls will be with people like Captain Baumberger or, you know, somebody who is out in the field. And we'll also be doing some reviews. So whenever people are submitting their videos, we can kind of have like a reaction to it. So we can show best practices or things that we would do to change it. Or, um, hey, like, this is what they're doing. Let's see how we can copy it and apply it out in our zones. Again, thank you all for your time. Uh, you know where to find us. If you have any questions, please let me know. All right, thank you all for your time and have a good day.